Hello guys, gals, and NBs. Let's make this interactive flowy stone thingy today. It's a further exploration of the life component. And a play with some attractors. So you will need the life component for this one, you can find it on my Patreon, or by following the video in the description. We will use the new version, but I've made a dedicated video for that so you can be sure that we are using the same version as me. It's fully 3D, and you can play with the light and everything. Yeah, I think you can make very pretty and interesting things with this if you want to. Let's start with an empty project like this. And start with a constant chop. Let's call this sim res, and you can change this up and down, depending on what your machine can handle. I'm setting it to 400. Control B, to open the palette. Go to point clouds, point generator, and drop it down. And I'm using the sim res value for points. And let's square the value with x, x, 2. Connect it to a null. Let's name it POS. Let's render this. A box SOP. Let's change the scale to 0 0.01. Connect it to a geometry. Let's drop some things we might need. A camera. A light. An ambient light. A phone material. Drag it to the geo. And a render top. Set your resolution. And I'm using 32-bit mono, because this is going to be monochrome. I'm connecting a null to the render, to put this in the background. Turn on instancing, and let's use the POS as translate operator. And let's use red, green, and blue. Let's turn the ambient light down. In the light component, under the light tab, set it to cone light. And move it somewhere nice. Turn soft shadows on if your machine can handle it, otherwise hard shadows are fine. And I want this to be a rectangle, so let's change the shape in the point generator. And I want this to be a rectangle, but I'm actually going to use a box. Because I want just a hint of depth. Something like 0.01 in depth. Scaling it to the shape I want it to be. Ok, let's start making the movement. We can start with a feedback top. And a keyboard in to reset it. And let's use the life component. I've linked a video, where I show you how to build this. Connect the output from the point generator to the input of the life comp. 
And let's connect an overtop after the feedback. Make sure you grab the life output and plug it into the overtop. The life goes into the first input and the feedback into the second. And let's just connect a little noise top to this. Plug the feedback into both inputs. Offset 0. Monochrome off. Under output, set it to only noise. Amplitude 1. Let's connect this to a math. And multiply it by 0 0.01. Add this to the loop. And let's close the loop by dragging the POS null to the feedback. Let's turn the lifetime down to 2. And the variance up to 0 0.5. This is a little bit boring. So I'm stealing this technique from Nunom Botun. It's so simple, but makes such a difference. Amazing artist by the way. If you are not following him, what are you even doing? Let's connect a noise at the end here. Just to grab the resolution. Offset 0. Amplitude 180. And set it to just noise under output. And let's drag this into the rotate operator. Now all of the boxes are randomly rotated, and it just gives it that organic variation. Okay, let's use the second output from the life component. The life fade texture. We will use this to control the scale of the instances. We connect a null here, and the drop down is select down here. And select that texture. Connect it to a null, name it scale. And let's instance the scale with that texture. But now the instances goes from small to large over their lifetime. Let's make them fade in and out. Let's drop down a math here. And multiply it by 2. and then a limit top. Set limit minimum and maximum to zigzag. Minimum is 0, maximum is 1. The instances are now fading in and out. Let's also drop down a noise. and set it to input times noise. Set the offset to something like 1 and the amplitude to 0.5. And that way you can have some randomness in the size. And now we can play around with the noise and shape it how we like it. We can also drop down a point transform after the add, and create constant movement. I'm going to make it fall down a little bit. And this is just for fun now, play around with it yourself, 
but I'm adding a Gaussian LFO, and connecting that to the amplitude of the noise. But you could make this audio reactive, or do whatever you want here. Or just follow along. I'm also connecting that to a speed. And I'm using it to translate the noise. Let's just do a little fast forward while I make micro adjustments that don't actually change anything, and I will change later anyways. Okay, now I'm happy with how that looks. Let's create the attractor. First a constant chop, and create three channels for the X, Y, and Z position. And let's use a mouse in to control that. But I suggest that you use any fun sensor that you have. Drop it down, and let's assign the X and Y, and we are keeping the Z at zero today. Let's just select this point transform to grab the current positions. Connect it to a constant, under the Output tab. Set it to Set Resolution only. Drag the X, Y, and Z to the red, green, and blue, respectively. And subtract this from the current positions. And there we have our vector directions. I'm turning off the alpha in the subtract top. I don't think that makes a difference, but sometimes that alpha channel can really mess things up if you are not careful. Move these out of the way. Let's mask those with three thresholds. Connect a threshold to the select. Set the soften to 1. The comparator to not equal and the R, G, B, to red. Let's drag the X value to the threshold. Copy and paste this two times. The second one, we change to green, and drag the Y value to the threshold. The third one is blue, and we drag the Z value to that. A composite to multiply these thresholds with each other. And then we multiply that with the vector positions. And add it to the loop. We now have a little attractor here. Let's add a math. If we increase this signal, it gets stronger, and if we invert it, it becomes a repulsor. I'm setting it to something like negative 4 today. I'm just going to scale up the mouse in a little bit. Yeah, this is fun.
Let's add a sphere SOP. And bring down the radius. Connect it to a transform SOP. And assign the X, Y, and Z positions to it. And let's plot that into a geometry. Isn't that neat? You can use the soften in the threshold to change the size of the attractor. And we are done here. The biggest biggest thank you to all of you who support me on Patreon, you make it possible for me to spend time researching and making these tutorials. I appreciate you so much. And all of you who are just there to grab the project files without having to sit through a tutorial. I appreciate you just as much. Thank you too. Cheers.